the bed Never been stopped yet, never upset Not a good look for a heart at the end Not a good place to be found half dead I'll go easy, you're no fool If you will take care as I lie in your room Share your affect, share not mine Bless me easy, bless my eyes Oh, clever child, I've heard you before Lots to say, no idea what's in store Lost one year of youth to the play Thought by now you'd have grown out of this Calm down, stranger, there's no rush Come along then, we needn't say much Been a long while since affable touch been a long while since you left your house. Fall through the cold underground. To your home in the snow As the pine needles fall And the long winter crawls To a haunting of all living things And the grip of the Where do you feel that when you're singing that? Where, do, where, is that, where does that song come from in yourself? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think, you know, everyone, or at least me, you know, can, I'm, can kind of be my worst enemy sometimes, you know, my own worst enemy. Uh, and you kind of beat yourself up for stupid stuff you do or say or whatever. And then I kind of, a lot of times feel like I reach a breaking point and then I do a total 180 and I say actually you have to be nice to yourself sometimes and you have to kind of go easy on yourself mm -hmm. sometimes and so it's that kind of back and forth when I feel that I, it's like the um, kind of beating myself up for stupid stuff and then saying take a step back actually you're okay you know you're, mm -hmm. you'll be okay you're doing your best the setting of this show obviously is about home and comfort. You know, your artistic expression gives you a certain amount of comfort. Totally. At what moments does this comfort, uh, I guess, speak to you the most in the creation process? Yeah. Um, basically, you know, I, I write music that's in response to uh, stuff that happens to me, and I, I kind of feel like uh, the music that I write, that I, like me as a later, me as a different person later can connect to the most and hopefully other people is just like 
a kind of honest and direct response to stuff that happens. And this song and um, a lot of the other ones that are on this EP I, I released about a month ago were written after I got COVID in January. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I was, I was lucky that I had like a mild case and I, I got into an isolation hotel, which I was super lucky to mm -hmm. get into. But, you know, there were like two weeks where I was just alone in this room uh, again. And um, I just played music all day, every day. And that's the thing that kind of gave me comfort in that. And, and so when I think about these songs or other songs, it's like, they're, they're, they're things I do to um, heal, you know, from difficult times. And mm -hmm. Where did your musical um, inclination start? I was like, I don't know, 12 or 13. Um, I, I had already played the oboe, like a woodwind instrument. Um, I'd already been playing that in like band for a couple of years and I hated it and I was really bad and, you know. Um, and then my band director, like offered me a couple free lessons um, because not that many kids play the oboe so they want them to like not suck and I did suck so mm. they offered me free lessons and I started taking a couple lessons and then I sort of got a little better and then because no one really plays the oboe I was like one of a few kids who did it um, people started kind of giving me attention for it and you know I'm like a, I'm like an ENFP I'm like a kind of uh, attention-seeking extrovert, or okay. at least that's something, um, my inclination. So I really liked that as a kid, and then I kept doing it, and then I got, you know, and it was sort of a, um, a fed it feedback loop. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, um, one there was one afternoon where my sister showed me Radiohead. She showed me a Radiohead song called The Tourist, okay. which is um, off OK Computer, their album. And she was telling me about it, and she was like telling me about all this hidden meaning inside the song that, and that blew my mind, that like a, a piece of music can have like meaning outside of what just the kind of surface level thing is. And so for me, it was like classical music and like Radiohead and like indie music and everything. Mm -hmm. and, and those have always my whole life been since then been, you know, kind of the top. Classical music came first? Kind of at the same time. Okay. Kind of at the same time. And that was introduced through your family or was it, you were listening to it at your house? Or? Yeah, yeah, my, a little through my family and, and through this uh, wonderful woman named Rebecca Questad who was my first oboe teacher and she gave me this like CD of classical music that I just listened, you know, she burned from like old records and I just mm -hmm. listened to it every day and I also listened to like, you know, other Arcade Fire and whatever, mm -hmm. a bunch of other music like every day, and so musical musical sounds resonate sure. in, within our bodies, you yeah. know, just like tones. So, uh, what tone would you say is something that symbolize like somebody would resonate with you if you had to communicate yourself in in terms of a tone? Totally. Um, I can just like play a chord. Is that <laughs> some? I don't know something like. What is it about that? Um, a lot of music I like, and this it applies to like specific stuff like harmony and arrangements and whatever, but also just generally like um, kind of conception uh, is like strikes a balance between being immediately accessible and something that you can just like listen to here once and just totally connect with on a, on a, on a visceral, like emotional level. Um, and also something you can listen to a million times and still find something in and, and still find something that will you know, keep giving you, uh, that you can connect with or, mm -hmm. or uh, discover about it, you know? And so, like with harmony, when you make certain, when you, you know, play certain chords with certain added notes and stuff, which I really like to do, um, but you structure the harmony in a kind of certain way, I don't know, there, there, there's, I, I'm always looking for a way to do that in songwriting and lyrics and, and whatever. It's, it always just feels like that's the, the, 
the spot of home for me would be a harmony. Yeah. In terms of your musical home, it's yeah. that. Yeah. It's, and what what is specifically that? that this it, is like what a, notes are those? This is like a D major seven chord with an added added six and an added nine, so and over A. Um, but also like the you know with guitar or any string instrument, open string stuff sounds really nice. Kind of that. That's probably what I would describe as me. I really like major seven chords and mm -hmm. kind of, um, you know, like harmony with sevenths and ninths and you know nerdy stuff like that. Um, but tr it, it's almost like seasoning on food. Mm -hmm. Seasoning makes food taste better if you like know what you're doing and also if you don't do too much of it. And, you know what I mean? So. Um, for a long time, I just like added more stuff in in songwriting, and um, the, the the artists that I like just have a really coherent and and concise vision, but also with a lot of depth, you know. How do you know when you're done with a song? It's super hard to know. Um, but usually, it takes a certain amount of discipline, um, especially when you're recording. Mm -hmm. Writing a song, it's like, you know, I, I put in a structure, 
And that's, you know, I, I try to settle on that before I start recording. But a lot of stuff is left open. Um, and in a lot, of, a lot of the songs I've been writing these days, I leave, sorry, I leave a lot of space open for arrangements and for, you know, other stuff I want to record or get my friends to record. Or, and I, I, I really I like a kind of spacious sense in, in songwriting. But that can be hard because, you know, it takes a certain amount of discipline to say, OK, I want these instruments on this song, and I want them to play this, and that's what I'm going to do. And then you check off stuff, and then it, you, whatever you have, you have to really say, OK, is this done? You know, mm -hmm. am I recording? Do I need another mandolin part? Do I, do I need, you know, another guitar overdub? Or do I need to redo this vocal? Or, um, do, you need a, or do you need a horn? For do I need a horn? <laughs> do I need some found sound or whatever? <laughs> yeah. Birds chirping. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it takes a certain amount of discipline. Um, but usually what happens is I get to a point where I'm happy with something and I put it away. And then a week later, I listen to it, and I just try gut reaction. Is this done? Does this need something? There it is. And I do that with like demos when I'm just writing songs, and I do that with when I'm recording recording um, something that I'm maybe I'm thinking about releasing into the world. Um, and that helps a lot. Just perspective is everything. My dad really, um, he was a musician and, and he played guitar and he actually taught me guitar mm -hmm. when I started learning that, which was around maybe when I was 14 or so and I wanted to write songs. And he always used to play us like James Taylor and, uh, you know, um, Brian Wilson and, mm -hmm. and uh, Simon. That's where that Simon sounds Burke. come from. <laughs> yeah. I think that's, yeah. Totally, yeah. Those ones. Yeah, I mean, Beach Boys, especially like Pet Sounds and Smile era, uh, huge influence and, and point of departure for me. Um, uh, and he, yeah, those albums really do capture like, everyone knows, wouldn't it be nice? It's like a totally direct thing. And also it's like, if you kind of zoom in, you can just listen to it and not analyze it or whatever. And it's awesome. And if you zoom in, you're like, holy shit, this is like deep, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, my mom's not a musician, but she loves music, and she was always super supportive of me doing music. Both of my parents are. Um, and her, her dad, my mom's Ecuadorian. She's from a town called Ibadra in Ecuador, mm -hmm. which is in the mountains. Um, her dad uh, was a violin player, not professionally either. He just would play the violin every day, and he loved to play the violin. So she always, she grew up with an appreciation for music, and she, you know, yeah, she, she also super loves music, too. So that's the combination of your name is, you get the follow from your mom and yeah. the O'Connell from your dad. Yeah, yeah, my dad's last name is O'Connell, and my mom, yeah, and my, my name is Pablo. Is he, is he Ir from Ireland or Ir Yeah, in the sense that like, you know, I mean, O'Connor is probably like Irish yeah. too, yeah. No, it's Jewish. No, it's oh, Jewish. okay. No, okay. No, it's Irish. I'm a high No, it's Irish. Um, <laughs> it's um, Irish. Cool, yeah, but I mean, not recently, like, I don't know, right. 100 years ago, so sure. I came from Ireland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you explored your roots? Yeah. Your yeah, you know, I, I used to go to Ecuador every three or four years um, to visit my mom's family, and um, it's like, so beautiful. Like, the part of Ecuador my mom's from in the mountains, just like a postcard, like everywhere you look, it's just unbelievably breathtakingly gorgeous. Mm -hmm. A couple years ago when I started getting into Andean folk music, um, like folk music from the mountains uh, of, of the Andes, like the like Chile and Bolivia and Argentina and Peru and Ecuador. Um, and and through that, I've kind of reconnected a lot with, with that. And also with a, a lot of other stuff, culture and food and politics and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you have another thing, thing over there, another yeah. instrument. Yes. What, what do you got over there? This is called a charango. And it is, um, this one is from Bolivia. And it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's an Andean folk instrument. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like a cross between like a mandolin and a lute, sort of. Um, and it has this really beautiful close tuning. 
And so you get these really sparkly chords and mm -hmm. I've been playing it a lot lately and I, I really quite like it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna play a song on this. That's cool. Yeah. The song is called um, Haven't Found the Words. <laughs> 